Doesn't it sometimes feel like Microsoft goes out of its way to screw with us and irritate us? I mean, things that should be extremely simple in Windows are hidden or worse, non-existent. So here are some free utilities to fix those Windows irritations and search is definitely one of those irritations. I mean, you go into search and you type in what you're looking for and it brings up some results along with web searches for some strange reason. You then got to jump into various filters to find what you're actually looking for. Why? Why is this hit and miss? Well, to fix this irritation, download the everything tool. Right, head over to the voidtools.com and there you'll see the everything file. And now you want to choose the download installer. I normally go for the 64-bit one, download it, and then follow the prompt essentially to go through the installer. All of these links are going to be in the description of this video, so you don't have to worry about remembering them. Simply go and click through it. And of course, none of this is sponsored and they are all absolutely free. Okay, so now that you've run the installation files, this is what it looks like. Type what you're looking for and instantly it pulls up results. 814 objects have been found and I'm blurring this out because I am running this on my main computer. That is how good this tool actually is. And if you want to narrow it down under the search option, you can simply select, hey, show me only the video files, for example. And there it is. The everything tool is just that good. I install it on every computer that I use to find the files that I'm actually looking for. And speaking of files, we know that over time, our computers get filled up with a bunch of files that just take up space. You would think that Windows would have a simple way for us to identify these files and where they are stored on our computer so we can clean up, but no. So download this utility that does exactly that. Right, this utility is called Tree Size Free and there's a free version, there's a paid for version. I've always just used the free version. It does absolutely everything that I needed to do. And again, click on the free download go through their download procedure and follow the prompt and just simply install it. And once you do that, this is what it looks like. So what you want to do is you want to click on select directory, select the C drive, which is your main drive where all your files are, and just let it do its thing. What it's doing, it's going through every single file and folder and basically grouping it together based on size. So it gives you a nice visual representation of where everything is located. Once you have it, you can simply open up those folders, find the files that you want to get rid of, find the big folders and identify what's taking up that much space and essentially back it up, delete it, remove it off your computer if you no longer need it. Now you know what's hogging up your hard drive space. Okay, so now that we know what we can clean up and where it's stored, there's a new problem that pops up. Sometimes when you're trying to delete a file or move it to another location, Windows doesn't let you as something else is currently using that file. That is fine and totally understandable. But why does Windows sometimes tell us what is using that file and sometimes it doesn't? But worse, Sometimes the thing that is using that file isn't a program, so you have to reboot your computer just to release the hold on that file. Well, not anymore when you download this utility. Right, this one is called Lock Hunter, and essentially what it does, it's a free tool to delete files blocked by something that you do not know, and it is useful for fighting against malware. Super important as malware tends to be the one that hogs files and keeps them locked. So go ahead, same as before, download, follow the procedures, and this is what it looks like. Now you can right click on any file and select Lock Hunter, and it will say, hey, this file, nothing is blocking it. You can actually delete it. Now let's show you what happens when something is actually locking it and keeping it open. So I'm going to play this video clip. Now I'm going to right click on it. Who is locking this file? And there it is. It identified that it's the media player with that service that's currently holding that file open. So if I wanted to delete it, it could give me some problems. What I can do is simply go and click on unlock. It will tell you, hey, you're about to lose it. Yes, we know that. Click on yes. It closes down the media player, closes down whatever's keeping that file open. And now I can easily go ahead and delete that file. Windows has a decent utility to back up your files to an external drive. That's all cool. But what happens if you don't want just to back up a file? 
What happens if you want to have the same file constantly synchronized between, say, your laptop and your main computer or between your computer and an external drive? The backup utility doesn't do that. However, download this utility. This is by Two Bright Sparks, super powerful. I'm not sure why it's completely free. You create a new profile, so let's give it a profile name. And this is kind of a descriptive of what this thing is going to do. So I'm going to synchronize between an external drive and my local folders. Right, now you have the choice. You can either backup, you can synchronize, or you can mirror. I want to synchronize. I want my external drive to have the exact same version of the file that I have on my local computer. So I'm gonna choose that, but of course you can play with the other options as well. Now, it seems a bit complicated, it really isn't. On the left side, which is what they call the source, the left is the source, I'm gonna select a folder on my computer. On the right side, I'm gonna select the destination, which essentially is my external drive. Now, anything in the test folder is going to be automatically synchronized with my external drive. And if you look at the description of this profile, it tells you exactly what it's going to do, so there are no funny surprises in there. Once you're happy with that, basically, proceed. All right, so now we have this particular file, and let's go and move it on the left side. And here is my D drive, which is my external drive. And it's, see, there's nothing there in the D drive. It's completely empty. So let me show you how the sync works. Here is the app. Now we run it, click on continue, and now let's open up the D drive, and there we go. There is my important file. So it just basically made a copy of that file onto my D drive, as a backup normally would. But check this out. So now I've opened up the file on my D drive. That's my external drive. And here I'm adding a whole bunch of text inside that file that only exists on my external drive. So it doesn't exist on the left side on the C drive, it's only on the external drive. And the idea is we wanna see what will happen to it when you run the sync again. So let's save that file, let's close that down. And now let's bring back our program again and we're gonna right click on that and we're gonna click on run. And let's go see if it actually did what it's supposed to do. Open up the local C drive and there is the file with the new information that's exactly the same now as my external drive. So it's a good way to keep those two folders in sync. Now it's also worth mentioning that you can run this on a schedule basis, so it does it automatically, and you can run it unattended, which means you don't see any of these screens that pop up, it just does it. All right, let's talk about Wi-Fi passwords. So, you know when a friend comes over and says, hey, what's the Wi-Fi password? Well, if it's your own home, you typically know what the Wi-Fi password is, but let's just say you're at an event together, or you're at an Airbnb. Well, on your phone, it's very simple. You look at your phone settings, and there is the Wi-Fi password right there. However, why in Windows is this so complicated to do the exact same thing? I mean, just seriously, check this out. So you gotta click on start, you gotta go into your settings. Once you've gone into your settings, you've gotta go into network and internet. Then you gotta scroll down until you see network and sharing center, you gotta click on that. Then you gotta go to the Wi-Fi name and you gotta click on that. Then wireless property, click on that. Then click on security and then click on show characters. That is how many steps it takes just to see the Wi-Fi password. Okay, that is just overly complicating a simple thing. Just download this utility called Wi-Fi Password Revealer. So head over to this website, magicjellybean.com. I'll have the link in the description. Click on the download. It's a tiny little utility. And it's much simpler to see all the SSID, the Wi-Fi networks, and the password. And the nice thing is, it shows you all the passwords of the networks you've ever connected to, so you can go back and get them as well. Now, you would think that this one would be built straight into Windows. It's such a core component of it. But again, we got to jump through hoops just to get it. And I'm talking about getting your own Windows product key. Knowing the product key or the CD key is super important to have, especially if you're looking to change your computer and you own that license, or you wanna do a fresh installation of Windows, you need to have this key with you. And most of us don't remember our product key anyway. So product key finder is the utility that you want. Again, click on the download, follow the prompts, and it will hit a little zip file. You just double click on keyfinder.exe and it's gonna show you your product key, your CD key, and this is particularly good if you do not use the Microsoft account to manage your computer. Now, why would you not wanna use a Microsoft account? 
This is why. Check out this video next. But before you go, give the video a quick thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you in this video. Let's go.